Hey folks, Kevin here again. I'm out for a short hop this evening. It's the first campsite I did my very first solo overnight in a tent. So it should be quite nice to revisit it. And uh, I'll be camping tonight in a hammock. So if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, you're most welcome to join me. Let's go. So, if I do a little spin here, you can see that the snow is all gone, finally. And um, yeah, spring is finally here. There are some flowers out already. The leaves are, well, the buds are just starting to come on the trees. So uh, it's quite a bit far behind maybe what people in the UK and Ireland are experiencing as spring. But yeah, slowly but surely, it's, uh, it's coming. It's currently about 8 degrees Celsius and uh, it's quite warm during the day and sunny uh, but it'll cool down tonight. It's forecast to be as cold as minus 2, maybe minus 3. So, my hammock is up. And the lay seems to be okay so far. I may have to adjust it later on, but uh, I'll just give you a, a quick guide. So basically on each tree, I have a tree hugger and a carabiner attached to a whoopee sling, which I can adjust the actual, the height of the, of this, the actual hammock itself. Uh, these bungee cords attached to the mosquito net. The hammock itself is a DD frontline hammock. Uh, it's 2.7 meters long, 1.4 meters wide, uh, it is, and it has a double layer underneath. So you, in principle, you can put a mat or something. I've tried using a, a mat underneath me in this layer, and it just did not work. It wouldn't stay in place. On top of me, then, I'll have an enlightened equipment quilt, which is rated to minus six. Um, and then underneath me, I have this newly acquired... Uh, it is called the Glow Bushman Glow Underquilt, and it's rated for minus 12. It's a Polish company, as far as I know. Okay, so I have the tarp up. Um, it's uh, quite large, as you can see, and uh, I've got some pretty nice coverage underneath it. got a new saw. It's from a Finnish company called Fiskars. They're famous for making axes and things. And uh, seeing as I got a, myself a twig stove, uh, this is very handy for processing wood. As you can see, I'm surrounded by forestry and uh, there already has been, because of the dry weather, uh, both grass fire and forestry fire warnings. And of course, during such times, uh, you shouldn't actually light any open fires and uh, then you have to use gas or some other method of heating your food. Uh, it's not in operation at the moment. I checked. Uh, I've got a very handy uh, SCH. It's, it's an app for the weather for my phone, but um, it also shows different warnings such as uh, forest fire warnings or grass fire. my twig stove here and uh, it was quite cheap something like 20 or 22 euros something like that it's just uh, stainless steel plates that uh, fold together origami style and then they form basically a little box that you can use to burn some twigs with and it makes enough heat to boil water or Cook food. Right. So there we have it. And then has a little little floor in then as well. Um, and for cooking on it, you can also use these. What would you call them? Privets that slot in like that, and then they sit on top of the stove like that. And then your pot sits quite nicely on top. 
since starting camping. I have a, developed a fascination for lighting fires and then for different types of tinder. So, well, of course I have a regular lighter that I can use if all else fails. Um, I'm increasingly fascinated by using a ferro rod and uh, traditional tinder for uh, lighting fires. Okay, so now I've got some jute twine. This stuff is very cheap. You can buy it in any hardware shop. And what I found is one easy way to basically mm, treat this so that it takes spark easily, easier is to uh, use the edge of a knife and uh, run it back and forth uh, along the actual along the actual string itself. So if I carefully do this, it starts to go kind of fuzzy and uh, resembles, to all intents and purposes, a dreadlock is what I, the way I think of it. Another way you can do it is have a flat surface and lay it on top and then simply run the blade along its length and this causes the fibers to fray so it looks like furry. What I've noticed is that the fuzziest parts tend to burn very fast but if you can get enough of a flame and the rest burns it'll burn relatively long, certainly long enough to get other tinder burning. So if we went from a piece of string to something like that, it's kind of fluffy. One hour later. Mm, almost. I think it's time to make a cup of tea. Deal that up. And then we'll put it in the bag. And then we'll wait. I'm now comfortably in my hammock. Hopefully I can stay warm during the night. Right now it's about one degree Celsius, so it's already quite chilly. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Well, good morning folks. Oof. It's about half past five. The sun is starting to come up. And the birds have been tweeting for the last hour at least. There's ravens going and pheasants and God knows what else I'm going to stay in bed for as long as I can and try and sleep. I didn't sleep very well at all. I didn't um, set up my under quilt very well so I was quite cold for a long time so I'm just after getting up now and making some adjustments and yeah it already feels a lot better. It's a learning curve. I'll get there eventually. Woo. Right, breakfast of the champions. Looks pretty nice. Here it goes. A bit messy, but delicious. Uh, it's a bit early to have chocolate with my coffee, but what the hell. I thought today that I'd show you a couple of Finnish chocolate bars. Um, they're called tupla. Tupla means double. That's because there's two pieces of little bar inside. The original one is a little bit like a Mars bar, but without the caramel in. 
It's a little, little bit more chewy. It's also got uh, nuts on, on, on the outside. I won't open this one now, but I have a, a, a newer variant of this bar called Tupla, but this one has licorice in. As you may or may not know, Finns absolutely love their licorice. And uh, the saltier usually is the better. So they will mix it with ice cream. Uh, there's it. Like ice cream is black. I kid you not. It, the ice cream is black. It actually tastes okay. It's not my favorite, but um, yeah, it's all right. And as I can show you here, yeah, just to show again, see there's two pieces of chocolate in the actual wrapper. There you go. So, so the inside is actually two different types of licorice inside. And uh, I have to admit, this is surprisingly good. Uh, but I guess you just have to take my word for it. Mmm. Mm, it's good. Especially when you wash it down with the coffee. Licorice and finish is salmiaki. The principal component of salmiaki is, um, I think it's ammonium nitrate. It's some ammonium compound anyway. Usually, of course, ammonium compounds are used as cleaning products for your toilet. But somewhere along the line, Finns decided that they actually like the taste of it so much that they would actually eat it. It's perhaps an acquired taste. But, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of used to it now for the most part. As I say, it wouldn't be my favourite, but, no, well, it's not bad. I definitely encourage anybody to give it a try if they uh, ever come to Finland. Or indeed, <coughs> if you want to try this bar or some Finnish salmiakki or salty licorice, let me, down, let me know down in the comments and... I'll see if I can post you some. So, will you take the Salmiaki challenge? Let's see. Okay, that's it. All done. So, leave no trace. So, everything is nice and clean. Thank you to this spot for uh, hosting me for a lovely evening. Time to go. Let's go. Yeah, all in all, pretty good experience, although marred somewhat by the fact that I was cold and didn't get much sleep. But I have to chalk it down to learning experience and go forward from here. So I will say goodbye for now, and uh, I hope you enjoyed my adventure. Yeah, I hope to see you again on the next adventure, and you're most welcome. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.